very good evening once again so this is actually a 100 points uh, for discussion for the debt recovery agent examination to be conducted by indian institute of banking and finance so ibs ibs our institute is in forefront and it is the pioneer in giving training to banking personnel and our institute is accredited for conducting this uh, training schedule as per iibf that is 50 hours training for graduates and 100 hours training for undergraduates <coughs> so i i will share my powerpoint and each each slide will contain three points so i will explain one by one so that you material for your reading purpose just you observe what i am reading and what are all the major points i am covering i will highlight certain points so that it will be useful for you and you can also remember this first one bank is a financial institution that acts as an intermediary between servers and users of money so bank is a financial institution which acts as acts as an intermediary between the servers and the users of money that means what because in our society many persons are having surplus fund they will invest money as deposits in the bank so that that amount can be utilized for lending money so bank is an intermediary that is the first important thing between whom servers and users that means depositors and loanees second one the basic function of a bank are acceptance of deposits that is bank is accepting deposit from the public simultaneously with that funds bank is lending the same amount same money it is lending to the public and simultaneously it is investing funds in liquid securities also so that is the primary function of a bank so primary function is accepting deposit and lending or investment of money scheduled banks are banks which are listed in the second schedule of reserve bank of india normally in every examination repeatedly this question has been asked what is the scheduled bank scheduled bank is a bank which is listed in the second schedule of reserve bank of india second schedule is most important so kindly make note of it second schedule in which act because schedule means in which where it is where it contain it contains in reserve bank of india act 1934 <clears throat> these are all the first three questions number number 4 public sector banks are those where 51 percentage or more share capital is held by government of india so here the prominent point is which bank can be called as a public sector bank a bank in which 51 percent or more share that is most prominent 51 percent minimum there should be 51 percent more than 50 percent that is 51 percent 51 percent or more share and who is holding this shares government of india if government of india is holding 51% or more shares of a bank that bank can be called as public sector bank capital structure of regional rural bank normally in every examination this combination will be asked what is the combination of the capital structure of regional rural bank regional rural bank the capital structure is central government is holding 50 percentage share state government is holding 15 percentage share and the sponsoring bank is holding 35 percentage share so 50 percent central government 15 percent state government 35 percent sponsoring bank normally each regional rural bank will be sponsored by another bank then what is foreign bank foreign banks are banks incorporated in a foreign country so this bank has been incorporated in a foreign country not in india but granted license by reserve bank of india to do banking business in india so here the prominent point is they have to obtain a license from whom reserve bank of india for conducting banking business in india but they are incorporated outside india local area bank what is the local area bank 
local area bank is a bank which have been given license by reserve bank of india to function in a specialized local area specialized local area first first peculiarity is it will function only in a specialized local area and second peculiarity is the capital base will be very much minimum it is not highly capitalized huge capital is not required for forming a local area bank then comes cooperative bank cooperative banks are registered either under state cooperative act or central cooperative act so cooperative banks are banks which are incorporated as per cooperative act sometimes it may be with the state cooperative act sometimes with the central cooperative act that is if a cooperative bank is functioning in one state then the state cooperative act will apply if it functions in multiple states then central cooperative act will apply electronic banking has been introduced in india because of that new banking channel like mobile banking internet banking credit cards atm etc is now possible as per aml kyc rules 2005 rbi issued directives to all banks for complying with procedure of know your customer in respect of all their new and existing domestic and non resident customers so here from the examination point of view there may be a question no your customer guidelines has been given by whom these guidelines have been given by reserve bank of india as per aml anti money laundering and kyc rules 2005 these rules have come based on prevention of money laundering act 2002 which is prominently known as pml act prevention of money laundering act in order to check the money laundering in our country kyc establishes identity proof and address proof which is known as residence proof so kyc means what kyc means it is having some uh, prominent four pillars are there customer acceptance policy customer identification procedure risk management and monitoring of transactions but kyc in a simpler way we can say that it establishes the identity proof as well as the address proof of a person power of attorney what is a power of attorney it is a document duly stamped so definitely it should be stamped as per which act as per indian stamp act it should be stamped given by a customer that is the principal to his or her banker authorizing his attorney or agent so the person who is giving this power of attorney is known as principal and the person to whom it has been given is known as agent <clears throat> when illiterate persons are allowed to open a savings bank account they are not given checkbook facility so this is another point illiterate persons they should have the enjoy the facility of banking all types of banking facility we will allow but we will not give any check book because they cannot put a signature only with the signature the banker can identify the party who has signed the check so from examination point of view no check book will be allowed for illiterate persons they have to come to the bank in person and withdraw the money what is a hybrid deposit another name for hybrid deposit is flexi deposit it is a combination of our savings bank and fixed deposit otherwise from exam some sometimes examination they will ask it is a combination of demand deposit and time deposit so demand deposit is nothing but our savings bank and current account and time deposit is nothing but the fixed deposit so it is flexi deposit or hybrid deposit means it is a combination of savings bank with a fixed deposit or current account with a fixed deposit like that the main features of current accounts are there there are no restrictions on number 
of transactions, number of withdrawals as well as deposits. There is no restriction in respect of withdrawal or deposit of amount. The accounts are non-interest bearing. So there is no interest which the banker will pay in a current account. In a savings bank account, banker usually pays interest. But in a current account, there is no interest to the depositor. So zero interest deposit, a demanded deposit. This is a prominent area where you have to apply your mind. So many questions are framed based on this. Zero interest rate, it is in current account. But another peculiarity is also there. In current account, it can be operated only with a checkbook. In savings bank, if there is no checkbook, the customer can use withdrawal form. He can come to the bank and withdraw the money. But in this current account, checkbook is a must. Minimum period of a fixed deposit is seven days. Maximum period of a fixed deposit is 10 years. So seven days is the minimum, 10 years is the maximum. When the interest is added to the deposit as against paying it immediately to the depositor, the interest is said to be capitalized, that is compounded, and earns interest during the next time, next time period for compounding interest. That means whenever a person is putting fixed deposit, if the interest is not being withdrawn, it will be added back to the principal so that it will be accumulated. The word use is compounded. Check is an instrument that is exclusive to the banking system and no other institution in our country are permitted to issue checks to their customers. Only a bank can issue a check to a customer. Along with the bank, post office savings bank and the primary agricultural credit societies, they can also issue checks. Other than that, no person is authorized to issue checks for deposit accounts. A check may be a crossed by whom a check can be crossed by a drawer or any holder any holder can cross a check but check can be opened by only by the drawer check can cross by any person a check payable to order can be negotiated only by endorsement and delivery endorsement means putting signature on the back side of the instrument so in your examination sometimes they will ask an order check can be negotiated. Negotiated means you can make the payment. You can make the payment to the last beneficiary by endorsement and delivery only. The two aspects should be there. Endorsement should be there. Delivery should be there. The obligation of the bank to maintain secrecy of the account of the customer continues even after the customer's account is closed. So till what time you have to maintain the secrecy of your customer? As a banker, you have to maintain secrecy. So, Zor Bank of India is very clear in this that the banker should maintain secrecy of the accounts of the customer even after the customer closes his accounts. So, in the lifetime, the banker cannot disclose the secrecy. Then when he can disclose the secrecy, he can disclose the secrecy Point number 23, a banker is justified in making disclosure about the status of the customer's account only under law, if the law insists for that. If a court is asking the bank to disclose it under express or implied consent of the customer, if the customer himself is saying that, sir, kindly disclose these details to that person who will inquire it or under public interest. So under that circumstances, it can be disclosed. Come back to 22. The banker's obligation of keeping the secrecy of the status of the customer's account is absolute. It is not absolute. It is only qualified and not absolute. That means a qualified report only will be disclosed. Absolute report will not be disclosed. So these two words are important. The secrecy report should be qualified and not absolute. Money laundering is the process where the origin of the funds generated is by illegal means. If a person is acquiring funds, generating funds by doing some illegal activity, then we can say that this is a money laundering process. How he is gaining this? Illegal means drug trafficking, illegal arms trade, corruption, etc. 
Prevention of Money Laundering Act was passed by Government of India in the year 2002. So, Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Each act is having a year. So, here PML Act relates to 2002. This should be always in your mind, 2002. What is the process of money laundering? What are the stages? There are three stages for money laundering. The first stage is placement. Second stage is layering. Third one is integration. That means PLI. This should be in the order only. Examination, sometimes this will be given ultra forms. Here and there, they will change the options. First, it should be placement. Second, layering. Third one is integration. A credit card is a small plastic card. It can be treated as plastic money also. It is a plastic card. It is having uniform, unique measurement throughout the world. That is 8.5 centimeter and 5.5 centimeter length and breadth. All companies are issuing, all card companies are issuing with this measurement only. Then only you can use it anywhere in the world. So 8.5 and 5.5. Every card has a smart chip. The name, account number of the holder and the month up to which it is valid. These things will be described in the card. This will be encrypted. What is the meaning of encryption? You cannot see it. Some of the valid data are contained in the smart chip which is appearing in the card. So that is known as encryption. Charge card is a type of credit card where the transaction by the card holder are accumulated over a period of time, generally a month, and the total amount is charged to the account as per the instruction of the customer. So from examination point of view, what is most important in this? Charge card means when the account is getting debited, that is most important. In a credit card, the account is not getting debited immediately. Same way, charge card also, the account is not getting debited immediately. The transactions will be accumulated and it will be debited on a later date. As the transaction in the debit card are debited to the account instantly, they are relatively less risk to the bank. That means in a credit card, the party is paying money after using the card. So the credit risk is more in credit card. But whereas the credit risk is less in debit card, why? Because immediately upon use of the card, the account will be debited. So from examination point of view, debit card, the risk, credit risk is less, bare minimum. Credit card, it is high because the party has to make the payment after some time, after using the card. In case of smart cards, the size, position, and utility of the contacts are specified by international standard. Reference number for that is ISO 7816. So you remember this number. So that the cards can interact with a variety of equipment. You can use it in ATM. You can use it in POS. You can use anywhere, any, any equipment which will accept the card. It will interact automatically. So that standard has to be kept. Banks are required to classify their loan assets as per the regulatory guidelines issued by the Reserve Bank of India. So the regulatory guidelines are issued by whom? Reserve Bank of India. Regarding what? Classification of assets. What are all the classifications? There are three, sorry, four different classifications. First one is standard asset. Second one is substandard asset. Third one is doubtful asset. Fourth one is loss asset. So you as a debt recovery agent normally come across with these type of assets when you enter into agency business. So standard asset, substandard asset, doubtful asset, loss asset. An asset including a leased asset become non-performing when it ceases to generate income for the bank. So an asset become NPA when it ceases to generate income for the bank. Ceases means stops. It stops generating income for the bank. A non-performing asset is a loan. It is a loan where the interest and or installment of principal remains overdue for a period more than 90 days in respect of a term loan. So you remember these days. 
if it is overdue if it is overdue for a period more than 90 days that means on 91st day the account will become npa so more than 90 days is the most important point here in the case of cc also if the account remains out of order for more than 90 days more than 90 days is most important if it is out of order for more than 90 days on the 91st day the account will be categorized as a non performing asset as per existing guidelines a substandard asset would be one which has remained in npa category for a period of up to 12 months so the first 12 months immediately after becoming npa the first 12 months the account will be treated under or categorized under substandard an asset would be classified as doubtful when after completing 12 months in the substandard category thereafter thereafter that is there after 12 months in the NPA category, substandard category, the account will be classified as doubtful asset. Then what is a loss asset? Loss asset means an asset in which deterioration of security happens. Because of that, the auditors, internal, external, or RBA, the auditors are Hello? recommending they are it and they are recommending for classification of the asset into a loss asset. The Reserve Bank of India is the regulatory authority for banks and non-banking financial companies. So who is the regulator of banks? We can very well say that Reserve Bank of India. Similarly, NBFC also, Reserve Bank of India is the regulator. The directives and guidelines on debt recovery agents issued by Reserve Bank of India from time to time are required to be complied by banks and non-banking financial companies and also their recovery agents so who is issuing directions guidelines for debt recovery agents reserve bank of india is issuing directions to debt recovery agents debt recovery agent may be defined as a person engaged by a financial institution including banks or some other entity or agency you may be sometimes working for an agency for the purpose of what is the purpose of dra appointing dra collecting the dues first purpose is collecting the dues dues of what dues of specified loans or advances or any other kind of debt so they are collecting debt that is why the name debt recovery agent has come they, from whom they are collecting from the debtors debtor is a person who owes something to another so he, they are collecting debts from the debtors for creditor for on behalf of creditor they are doing this transaction then what is the arrangement between the debt recovery agent and the financial institution that is the creditor the arrangement is that of a contract of agency it is an agency business that a debt recovery agent is acting as an agent of the principal the principal here is the bank the agent here is the debt recovery agent in terms of section 186 of indian contract act because Indian Contract Act uh, is dealing with this contract of agency. There it is very clearly said, consideration is not necessary in any contract of agency. In an agency contract, the essential element of a contract, which is consideration, that may or may not sometime exist. That means the consideration is not an essential part. It is not absolutely necessary for forming an agency. So in examination point of this is most important because all contracts should have consideration. But for contract of agency, it is not essential. So there may be a question. In a contract of agency, both the parties to the contract, namely the principal and the agent, have to be major, above 18 years of age and of sound mind. Normally, any person can be appointed as an agent but if you analyze the debt recovery agent normally these agents will be appointed only if they are major and only if they are of sound mind both the principal even the principal a creditor or a banker a financial institution whatever it may be both the both the parties the person who is appointing and the person who is being appointed both the parties should be of major in age that is they should have uh, they attain the age of 18 and they should be of sound mind so both these things are important the agent's authority may be expressed or implied the agent's authority 
Sometimes it will be uh, in a written form. The principal will give that authority. Sometimes it will be implied through the transaction. But RBI has issued draft guidelines on recovery agents employed by banks. So who has issued the draft guidelines for recovery agents who are employed by banks? Reserve Bank of India has issued the draft guidelines. So the draft guidelines means Reserve Bank of India. So each and every institution is having some role on this. We will see that one by one. In terms of Reserve Bank of India guidelines, the draft guidelines. Banks should have a due diligence process in place of engagement of recovery of agents, which should be so structured to cover, among others, individuals involved in the recovery process. So those who are being appointed as a debt recovery agent, the Reserve Bank of India has given clear-cut instructions to bank that it should be based on a due diligence process. That means KYC norms has to be followed. The agent has to be properly recruited. They should have given proper training. They should have undergone examination of IIBF. They have scored the minimum marks and they have the minimum soft skill. They should have the minimum uh, soft skill. They, they should acquire that skill in order to uh, communicate with the customer. So for repossession of assets, with or without the intervention of court, the bank can give authority to collection agent. Because now the bank is uh, lending money, is it not? Debt, that is known as debt. Now the assets are with the customer. If the customer is not remitting his amount dues, the asset should be taken back to the bank, is it not? So the debt recovery sometimes will act as the possession age, that is they will repossession the asset. That means they will take away the asset from the customer to the bank. That is only with the clear authority. If they are having clear authority, then only they can do this. For repossessing the property, hypothecated, mortgage to the bank, legal and proper procedure should be followed. There are written down procedure by Reserve Bank of India that has to be followed by the banks as well as the debt recovery agent for taking possession of these assets. The recovery agent should perform their duties with the care and sensibility in particular aspects like hours of calling, privacy of customer identification, etc. So they should be very much care. They should put uh, importance for at what time they can call the customer. That is known as the hours of calling. And they have to keep the secrecy of the customer's account, privacy of the account. Very, very important part for the PRA. Methods of recovery followed in practice by the recovery agent should comply with the code of collection of the banking codes and standards board of India. So there is a code in India, banking, uh, banking codes and standards board of India. That is the minimum level of the codes and banking practices has to be followed. So the method of recovery also based on this BCSBI. Code of Bank's commitment to customers sets a minimum standard of banking practice for banks to follow when they are dealing with their customers. So this code, what this code actually? This code sets the minimum standard. This code sets the minimum standard for the banking practice by banks in India. The Code of Bank's commitment to customers seeks to promote good and fair banking practice. So the standard of minimum standard of banking practice, that is number one point. Number two point, to promote good and fair banking practice by setting minimum standards in dealing with the customers. So by setting this minimum standard, what the bank is achieving? The bank is achieving to promote good and fair banking practice. Methods of recovery followed in practice by the recovery agent should comply with the code of collection of banking codes and standards board of India. So whatever the debt recovery agent is going to execute, whatever the methods he is going to execute for recovery of the debt, it should be as per the standard. Code of banks commitment to the customers again sets the minimum standard of practice. Sorry. The code of bank's commitment to the customer seeks to increase the transparency so that the customers can have a better understanding of what to reasonably expect from the bank's service. So we have seen in the earlier this thing sets the minimum standard of banking practice by which we can promote good and fair banking practices simultaneously to increase the transparency. There should not be any hidden item between the banker and the customer 
to increase the transparency so that the customer can have a better understanding of what to reasonably expect from the bank's service. The Code of Bank's commitment to the customers seeks to promote fair and cordial relationship between the customer. So it will promote the fair and cordial relationship. Definitely, therefore, a debt recovery agent is required to follow all these commitments. Still, the bank is also obliged to do this. Debt recovery agent is also simultaneously obliged to continue this commitment. A debt recovery agent is required to document the important development and the events in the collection process, particularly in difficult and disputed cases. He has to document the important developments. Each and every day, he has to write a diary. One by one, he has to jot it down what happened exactly with this customer today. What are all the reactions of the customer? Especially in difficult and disputed cases, it has to be documented. So from the examination point of view, if the customer, if the debt recovery agent is facing a difficult and disputed circumstance, it has to be documented properly so that it will become an evidence. Provisions of Surface Act do not apply where any security interest is created in agricultural land. Surface Act, you may be knowing, that will apply in the case of hypothecation, mortgage, and assignment. So their underlying property will be with the bank, with the customer. So the banker or the debt recovery agent, with his authority, within his authority, he can approach the customer and he can take possession, repossession it is known as. He can take possession of the asset, but he cannot take agricultural land. That is an exception. Agricultural land cannot be taken in possession as per Surface Act. So it is outside the purview of Surface Act. The debt collection policy of banks are generally based on principles of dignity and respect to customers, courtesy, fair treatment, the persuasive interaction. All these things are important. So principles of dignity should be there. We have to give respect to the customers. We should be having the courtesy towards them. Our treatment should be a fair treatment. Persuasive interaction should be there. All these elements are most important in this debt collection policy. So the policy, now we have, we have the guidelines of Reserve Bank of India. Now the bank is drafting a policy. The name of that policy is debt collection policy. So debt collection policy, who is drafting? Banks, is, banks are preparing that policy. While doing recovery, calls are to be made to the customer from the same number which was informed by the bank to the customer. At the time of appointing a debt recovery agent, immediately bank will inform the respective customers whose debts are to be collected by the debt recovery agent. The details of the debt recovery agent, his name, telephone number, which telephone number he will use to call the customers, like details will be shared. So it should be from the same number the debt recovery agent has to make the telephone call. The debt recovery agent is legally authorized to collect the specified receivables from the debtors on behalf of the principal, that means the banker, in terms of what are all the documents he is having for collecting this. The first and foremost document is the loan document executed by the customer to the bank. First one is loan document. Second one is the debt collection agency agreement. The bank is entering into an agreement with the debt collection agency or the debt recovery agent. So first one is agreement with the customer. Second one is agreement with the agent. Security asset means the property on which security interest is created. Security interest can be created in immobile property as well as movable property. Normally immobile property, the security interest will be created in the form of mortgage. Immobile property, sorry, immobile property in the form of mortgage and movable property in the form of hypothecation. So security asset means what? Property on which Security interest is being created. Security debt means a debt which is secured by any security interest. So secured debt, security debt or secured debt, that means the debt which is secured by a security interest or that means either mortgage or hypothecation or even assignment. Security interest means the right title, <coughs> the right title and the interest of any kind whatsoever upon the property created in favor of any secured creditor, which includes mortgage, hypothecation, assignment. So the mortgage is applicable for immobile property, 
application for mobile program assignment for actionable claims just like in lic policy or receivables provision of surface act shall not apply in cases where any security interest for securing repayment of any financial asset is up to 1 lakh you have to uh, i will correct this it is not less than 1 lakh it is up to 1 lakh or the amount due to is less than 20 percentage of the principal amount and the interest thereon so where the surface act will not apply first one we have studied in agricultural property it will not apply now there is another condition if the dues the total dues are collected from the customer is up to 1 lakh if it is up to 1 lakh we cannot enforce surface if it is over 1 lakh then only we can enforce surface action simultaneously if the total debts out of the total debts the customer has remitted more than 80 percent that means the remaining person remaining amount which the customer is owing to the bank is less than 20 percent of the principal and interest surface action cannot be initiated so less than 20 percent of the principal and interest is most important point to note the simultaneous the one lakh also up to one lakh it cannot be above one lakh you can enforce surface the banks abide by rbi directives on recovery of debt including recovery agents engaged by the bank and the model policy on collection of dues and repossession of security framed by indian banks association now you have learned three things number one is the rbi guidelines number two is the policy collection policy of the bank number three you see the model policy of collection the model policy of collection who has uh, uh, given that uh, policy indian banks association the third one third point and the model policy on collection of dues and repossession of security framed by indian banks association the recovery agent should as far as possible honor the customer's request to avoid the calls at a particular time or particular place the customer is requesting sir you don't call me at this time because i will be very busy don't call him like that particular place also you need not come sir here office you need not come i will uh, remit the amount or you come to my house then that also uh, uh, we can accept in appropriate occasions such as bereavement in the family or illness will be avoided for making calls is it suppose some death happens in the bank in the in the, that particular family the customer's family bereavement then you you are not supposed to contact him in the event of commitment not forthcoming from the customer or it had been broken calls may be made in reasonable frequency suppose the commitment he is not uh, and he is not uh, committing what he has already committed he is not fulfilling the commitment then you can call him frequently otherwise you are not supposed to call him frequently the excessive number of calls should be avoided excessive number of calls are not permitted you have uh, made a call by 7 o'clock again 7 5 7 10 that is not possible that should not be that should be avoided during the visit personal visit due respect and courtesy should be shown to the customer and the interaction should be civil and polite as per the principal's policy so during the visit personal visit you should give respect and you should be courtesy enough to con uh, con uh, communicate with the customer conversation with the debtor should be recorded if it is warranted you can record it by video or audio but audio video recording is permitted only as per the principal's policy principal's policy if the bank required you to do so then you can do that the agent should not violate or breach the recovery policy procedure etc prescribed by the principal and should not exceed the authority normally the agent could perform within his authority only he should not go above his authority he should not breach the authority a good recovery agent should be a good communicator and also a good listener so he should be a good communicator he could communicate well he could convey the message to the customer simultaneously he should a good he should be a good listener as well when a recovery agent assumes a post a posture of superiority and belittles the debtor in communication process the recovery agent is really making the recovery difficult because if you post as the superior to him and if he is not if you are not listening to him properly you are avoiding him you are uh, avoiding the debtor then the entire process of this recovery will be difficult the recovery agent should show empathy 
he should show empathy to the customer empathy means from you you, you should uh, think from your side if you want the customer what you will think in that way you have to think respect to the debtor not withstanding the fact that he is a debtor to the principal so empathy should be there from your side the dra should not make the debtor feel anxious insecure threatened by communication either verbal or non verbal so the dra should not make the debtor feel anxious do not should not okay should not feel the debtor anxious insecure threatened by the communication with your communication it he should not feel like that the dra should explain the consequences but he has to explain the consequences if the debtor is not remitting the installments because there is a civil code civil history is it not if he is not remitting his credit history will be ruined so you can uh, highlight that consequences you can highlight to the customer but it should not be in a way anxious to the customer or insecure or threatened it should be in a threatened form the dra should explain the debtor that non repayment of loan dues would amount breach of loan agreement and would result in bank charging higher interest rate so if the customer is not remitting then he will face the consequence what type of consequence is burden will be more bank will charge penal interest rate higher interest rate the banker may delegate powers of compromise to the recovery agent who have proven expertise in negotiating where the security documents are missing or time barred or cannot be filed in a court of law or where there is no security at all so sometimes the security debt recovery agent may be given the power to negotiate with the customer so go for a compromise you can reduce something but not always it will be allowed only if what are all the circumstances if the document of the loan documents are time barred number 2 if the loan document are not enforceable in a court of law some deficiency is there in the execution or even sometimes some primary collateral security will not be available so recovery is very difficult then the dra can delegate sorry the bank can delegate the dra the powers to compromise duties of bank to its customers include maintaining the secrecy about customers account duty to honor check if drawn properly and sufficient balance available in the account issue passbooks statement of accounts collecting bills and checks so these are the duties of a bank to its customer maintaining secrecy duty to honor checks if it has to honor the check if sufficient balance is available in the customer's account it has to issue checkbooks statement of accounts collection of bills checks etc these are all functions other than the primary function primary function we have seen accepting deposit and lending money other than that these are all other functions and other duties of the bank similarly other functions are also there safe custody safe deposit so many other functions are there they are all ancillary function the repayment collection timing should be synchronized to the cash inflow pattern of the debtor so that the collection efforts get good results so the repayment collection timing when you have to collect the money when there is money in the hands of the customer when the money will be with him suppose he is a salaried person at the time of receiving salary every month after 30 days he will receive salary that is the apt time to collect money from a salaried person for a business person very if it is a good season you can collect it if it is a bad season covid season you cannot collect it so that is known as the repayment collection timing it should be synchronized to the cash inflow pattern of the debtor credit counseling what is credit counseling credit counseling is the process of educating the borrower about how to avoid incurring debts that cannot be repaid so also how to manage the debt burden and repayment commitments in respect of number of debts how you have to educate the customer it is also your role that is known as credit counseling how far he can go for a credit if he is having 10000 rupees salary he can afford to remit only up to 6000 so the 4000 will be for him for his livelihood and other expenses medical expenses so you are counseling sometimes you will act as the counselor credit counseling involves negoti- negotiating with the banks also to establish a debt management plan for a customer you can also recommend to the principal the banker that this fellow is having this much burden why can't we do it like that so you are actually 
establishing a debt management plan for the customer. So you are now an intermediary between the customer and the banker. It's a very important role. The most common type of a debt management plan is the consolidation of multiple monthly payments into one monthly payment, which will be usually less than the sum of the individual payments previously paid by the customer. Suppose the customer might have availed three different loans. Now he is in trouble. You are going there and recovery for recovery. Now, what is this debt management plan you are executing? You will suggest him that, sir, you do one thing. You clip all the three install all the three obligations so that you put it in one installment. So all the loans will be clubbed together for repayment uh, repayment uh, purpose. Another thing is the total, if you arrive at, it will be less than the three different individual amount. Three different individual amount, maybe 7,500. After doing this debt management plan, it will come down to 6,000. So a comfort level will be there for the customer. So he will start remitting. When a recovery agent is dealing with a customer, he should keep in mind that he has to do business with the customer again. That should be always there in the mind of the debt recovery agent. You are not going for the final day, is it not? It should be in your mind that I have to do business again and again. That means the bank has to do business again and again with the same customer. So ill treatment should not be there. So recovery agent should stimulate the goodwill while collecting the dues. He should stimulate the goodwill of the bank. Rights and duties of the agent are governed by Indian Contract Act 1872. So the act defines who is an agent and who is a principal. We have seen that agent and principal are governed by Indian Contract Act and preferably both of them should be a major and of sound mind person. Sound mind. He should not be an unsound mind. He should not be a minor. So opposite of that, what? He should be a major and a sound mind. The Contract Act does not specify specifically provide for an agent's right to get remuneration. There is no specific mention about a remuneration to an agent in the Contract Act. In the Act, it is silent. But in practice, banks and recovery agent can agree to scale of agreed to a scale of fees for various kinds of debt recoveries. So, from examination point of view, the act doesn't contain agents' right to get remuneration. It is silent about that. But only in practice, the right to get remuneration is established. Right to retain also another right of the agent. The first right is right to. <coughs> Right to get remuneration is the first right. The second right is right to re right to retain the money collected from the debtor till the expenses met by the agent is being reimbursed. Because you may be incurring some expenses, that expenses has to be reimbursed so that till that time you can retain the money. This is as per agency. Contract of agency, normally in banking parlor, this will not happen. Normally you have to remit entire amount and thereafter you will get back the expenses incurred by you in executing the recovery action. Any sum due to agent as remuneration and thereafter. So the expenses and remuneration can be for that purpose you can retain the money. That is what the contract act says. The principal is liable to compensate the agent in respect, in respect of any injury caused to him either because of the principal's neglect or want of skill. So he should be properly compensated if he is doing his uh, agency work as per the agency agreement. As per the contract act, the employer of an agent is bound to indemnify him against the consequences of all lawful acts done by him. Suppose he may be in a position to do some action. For that, he cannot every now and then contact the principal. He is doing it as per the law. He is doing as a lawful thing. So at that time, if he is suffering from some, some loss, he has to be indemnified. An agent is not entitled to any indemnity from his principal for any criminal or wrongful act. If he is doing a lawful act, he is, will be compensated. But if the agent is performing any criminal or wrongful act, he will not be compensated. He will not be indemnified. So from examination point of this is important. When can a uh, principal is not bound to indemnify an agent? When the agent is committing an action which is criminal in nature or wrongful, so he will not be compensated. Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, FDCPA, 
is a federal act of United States of America, which seeks to promote fair debt collection practices by trying to eliminate abusive practices in the collection of consumer debts. So the, the procedures of the practice used in America, it is known as FDCPA. Examination, this name is most important, fair debt collection practice. But in UK, debt collection agencies are licensed and regulated by Office of Fair Trading, OFT, relates to United Kingdom. OFT has set, up, set out guidelines on how debt collection agencies can operate. The Reserve Bank of India, in consultation with the Government of India and some banks and financial institutions, finalized a set of codes called the Fair, Pri Fair Practices Code for Lenders and advised banks to adopt the guidelines. So Reserve Bank of India, in consultation with the government of India and some banks, they have come up with a, a code, a set of codes for uh, ensuring the fair, pra uh, fair practices code for lenders. Lenders should give notice of any change in the terms and conditions, including interest rates, service charges, etc. Lenders should ensure that Change in interest rate and charges are effected only prospectively. So from examination, this word is most important. From which date a lender can change the interest rate? A lender can change the charges prospectively. That means you cannot change it from retrospectively from a date past to today. It can be carried out from a future date. So prospectively is most important. In the option, you may be getting prospectively, retrospectively, current, something. So many options will be there. So you have to select prospectively. The changes can be made only prospectively. Before taking a decision to recall or accelerate payment or performance under the agreement or seeking additional securities, lender should give notice to the borrower as specified in the loan agreement or a reasonable period. So whatever is the action the lender is going to take, either to recall, or you are asking, the bank is asking to accelerate payment. That means you remit it fast in advance or any other performance. But everything should be by issuing a proper notice to the borrower. Without sending notice, a banker cannot insist on this. If a right of set-off is to be exercised, borrowers shall be given notice about the same with the full particulars about the remaining claims and the documents under which the lenders are entitled to retain the securities till the relevant claim is settled. Right of set off means the right of the banker to adjust a credit balance for a debit balance. Sometimes the debtors may have multiple debit balance. So whenever the banker is going to exercise his right, that is the right of set off. It has to clearly mention that these are all the debts for which I am going to exercise my right of set off. Apart from the fair price, Act, fair prices code. Every bank has to lay down appropriate grievance redressal mechanism to resolve dispute arising in this regard. So there should be a complaint management mechanism, grievances redressal. That means complaint management. In addition to the fair practices code, there should be a separate complaint management system also. Bank have also put on their website the fair practices code adopted by them and it has to be widely published. RBI issued a draft operational guidelines to all commercial banks for adoption and the guidelines in respect of engaging of recovery agents by banks. So Reserve Bank of India in its site, www.org.rba.org.in, they have issued the guidelines, operational guidelines. That is guidelines in respect of engaging a debt recovery agent by banks or financial institutions. So detailed guidelines have been given. In terms of those guidelines, banks should ensure to inform the borrower the details like the name, telephone number of the agent while forwarding the default case of the borrower to the recovery agent. So immediately upon handing over the borrower's file, that particular case file to their debt recovery agent, it is the duty of the bank to inform the particular debtor, that is the borrower, that we are going to engage your file to our debt recovery agent, so and so. His name should be conveyed. His telephone number should also be conveyed because you have to use that telephone number, telephone only. In terms of the Reserve Bank of India guidelines, every bank should have a mechanism 
whereby the borrower's grievances with regard to recovery process can be addressed. So the details of the mechanism should also be furnished to the borrower while advising the details of the recovery agent. That means suppose we are initiating the recovery process. So you are now at the doorsteps of the borrower. Now, because of your action, definitely the borrower should have a chance for some complaint. Definitely, because you are going for a recovery. So at the time of giving this information to the borrower, the banker has to give what is the other mechanism if you have any problem, if you are facing any difficulty with the dealing with my uh, recovery agent. So where you have to complain this, to whom you have to contact, that is known as the details of mechanism that should be furnished to the borrower while advising the credit or details to the details of the recovery agent. Banks are advised to ensure that the contracts with the recovery agent do not include, sorry, do not induce adoption of uncivilized, unlawful, and questionable behavior or recovery process. So banks are advised to ensure, so these guidelines has been given by the Bank of India, what they have to ensure, the contracts with the recovery agent do not induce adoption of uncivilized, unlawful, and questionable behavior. So everything, as a extended hand of the bank, you are now in the doorstep of the customer. So you are now representing the bank. So you should be civilized. You should be lawful. You should not be questionable. Your behavior should not be questionable. And the recovery process should be transparent, fair, and you should have uh, empathy with the customer. So with this, I am ending. These are 100 uh, prominent points which uh, we have jotted it down from our institute. We have jotted these points from the experience we gained from different examinations conducted earlier. And those who have written the examination, they have shared some of their questions based on that. We have prepared this. This is the first, first set of its kind. And the second part will be shortly published. So you once again go through these points, familiarize with points so that you can write the examination with the much confidence. So best wishes for you, all of you. Just read it twice or thrice.